Okay, so we're going to start off by doing the stencil. Just got some gloves here. And I've got the real skin out, ready to go. I've just put some more real skin underneath, just so I'm hoping that it's not as noisy when it comes to actually tattooing it. Um, but yeah, so we're just using stencil stuff, which I think that's, I found it to be the best um, for holding the stencil and for applying it. I really like it to use. And we're using the rough side of the real skin. Now it does come with a piece of paper and explains exactly how to do the stencil. Um, and I'm just going to apply a few coats of this stuff. And then just keep rubbing it until it's kind of like tacky. Now this is the same when it comes to sticking it on um, actual skin as well. I just keep rubbing it in and then if I press my hand on and pull it off it should get more and more tacky. And if you just keep doing that until it feels just tacky and not, um, not too wet on there that's how I find it gets the best stencils. Spot on. And here's the stencil that we've done earlier. Let's see how I want that to be placed. And then once we're happy, we're just going to try and press it down as hard as possible. And then even if you almost massage bits in there, rub it on. Then what we're going to do is, we're going to leave that for 10 minutes just to fully stick on and then another 10 minutes when we peel it off just to dry. Right, now that our stencil's dry and ready to go, let's begin. So, my setup here, I've got the grey wash is set out, um, starting from the line in black to the black. Then we've got our grey wash that we've made, so we've got extra dark, dark, medium, light and extra light. Um, I've got some Vaseline set out, which on these kind of real skin, that's normally what is best to get rid of the excess ink, you know, so I'd, I'd wipe it with the Vaseline and then wipe it off. Um, my machine, which I, I use an injector, um, nano, all wrapped up, ready to go, and my power supply, which I've set up, and that's just on 11 volts, which is kind of like a, a standard that I'll use for near enough everything, you know, unless I'm tattooing on an awkward area, you know, I might lower down the volts, but generally just 11 volts for everything. Um, now that is just preference. And the needles, 
So the setup we've got, I mainly only use four needles for near enough every tattoo. Now they might go a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller depending on what I'm doing, but generally they're the same. And that's a, a five liner, which is a 0 0.25. That just means it's a bit tighter, more like a, a five tight liner. Um, a 14 round shader, 0.35, and that's really splayed out with the needles, you know, because I, I really like to, to be able to shade with it. So if the needles more in a line are quite compact with the, the round shader, I like them really splayed out, you know, so I can shade a lot easier with them. More like a paintbrush. And I've got a 15 mag and a 17 mag. Now with the 15 mag, that's at 0.25 for the needles. And then with the 17 mag, 0.35. Now you can see the difference there is huge between them. This one's really small and that one's really big. Now the needles are a lot more tighter on this, more, more put together. So it help, it's really good for like smooth shades, um, whereas this one, it, the needles are quite spread out, quite chunky. Now I'll use this mainly for the shading on, on this design because it's really smooth. And then this mainly for the black areas, the background. Um, I, I do like to have two mags set out for that, you know, one for the shading and then one for the blacks. It just, just separates it a bit for me. and. I guess that's just the way I work, but the more you do, the more you'll find your own needles that you prefer, the sizes um, that suit you best, you know. But if you have a general four and go from there, um, and you can even go up or down, I suppose. Right, brilliant. Now this I haven't left on uh, for that long. I'm not overly fussy. I think when it comes to tattooing on actual skin, it's a it's a bit of a good practice um, to to work around it. So you, you you really want to focus on not rubbing parts off, and that that helps when it comes to tattooing, you know, on real people because you, the stencil has to be there. You know, there's a lot of designs where you can't afford to lose the stencil. So this is it's really good practice as well. Right, I'm going to start with the five liner. Now, I, I really do like the needle hanging right out on the liner. Just, um, I find it gives me more finer lines and I can really see the end of the needle when it comes to tattooing. So, first off, I'm going to dip it in the black. And now I'm looking to, in the design, I'm going to be marking in little areas, not necessarily some hard lines, just mainly marking in. Um, and that will be the areas that will disappear in the black. You know, for instance, under this petal here, um, mainly under any shadows or any areas that will that'll have black or a dark shade next to it. And if you can just dab away rather than actually wipe it, that'll save you a lot of the stencil. And you see here, I'm not. I'm just etching it in 
I'm not going so harsh with the lines, you know. And when you wipe these away, they won't, there'll just be a hint of them being there. Now these bits as well, on the outside, I'm not going too heavy, I'm just really lightly mapping it in. And then as we come to the black, this bit's a lot heavier and a lot slower. So where there's black underneath, that's where I'm going to have the really hard, like, more stronger lines, you know, that will disappear into the black. And then as it comes to here, where there's more light shades, I'm just really lightly putting it in. And that way, as the design develops, I can then, you know, make it more bolder if I want, or keep it thinner. And then just having the reference right by me, as close as possible, that really helps as well. Now it's quite hard to judge when obviously you're watching, but a lot of these lines are really really light lightly in it's only the the darker areas where I'm, I'm going a lot slower and a lot deeper in and if you're not as confident um, lining quite lightly with the black um, I'd recommend more even doing it with the medium grey Now my aim with with this is to with the line work is to just get a permanent stencil. You know, that's in in my head. That's what I'm thinking. So it doesn't even have to be so harsh. Like to a lot of people, the line really harshly to get it there. And for me, I can even just brush bits and you know just just get it so it's there, even just a little bit. Because we can we can always build, you know, as we go. 
do some shades and then come back to the lining. I find as well, if you if you get a routine down to how you do the tattoo, and and have that the same each time, it really helps. So even when it comes to the line work, I'll have the thick lines on the shadows. Um, you'll notice as well with this especially, I've done thick lines on the outside of the leaves, and a thicker line on the on the middle, but then marked in where the shades would go on the inside and it's just marking out um, especially in realism is having it so there's not so much lines I mean the less the better so a lot of this um, where the line work would be is it would disappear into the black and then just you know you do need some lines where it wants to hold nice for a tattoo you know but as long as it's contrast enough it'll always look good And then the only parts that we're not lining in is where these flow lines are coming through. And you'll have noticed as well, I've left them coming through the leaf. Now I don't want um, any lines going through where they are. I want it to be just shaded. So where they're coming through, I'm just really etching in where, where the leaf would be coming through. And then that way I can give the effect where it, you know, on the picture here where it goes lighter through, through on where the leaf part is. Right, perfect. Now that we have all them lines mapped in, um, I can really start giving it a little bit of a wipe, but not too much. The more, the more that I get in the shading, um, the more that I'll give it a wipe I suppose. It'll all look very dark at the moment just without me giving it a wipe but um, I just want to try and keep as much as the stencil on as possible um, and that way when I'm shading it'll, it'll gradually work, work its way to being how it's meant to be. I think that the less that you can wipe the better and that especially when you're tattooing on, uh, on real people because um, the less you irritate the skin, uh, the nicer it's going to be. It's not going to be as red. It's not going to be as traumatic on the skin. So that's what I'm thinking when I'm when I'm doing it and not wiping as much. Right, we'll have a little breather and then we'll come back to that. Okay, so next part, we're going to get the small shader out, the 15 mag. And I'm just going to wind that right in. So we've literally just got the tiniest bit sticking out there. Now 
And what I'm going to do, just between the, the light and the medium, uh, mainly light, is I'm just going to start marking in um, some of the shades that I need just to bring the design together. Almost like what I did with the lines. Now this is the shading part where I just bring it to being a permanent stencil. So I want to get these floor lines mapped in. You can see there, that's the bottom one popped in there. Now with this real skin, it can take the inks so fast. So I've just, I've just pulled back the needles just in ever so slightly, and I'm just moving into using more of the light Now what I do when I when I shade is I I mainly just pepper over the surface. You know I I find like you want to more cross hatch and just really brush the surface. And that's the same when I'm tattooing real skin as well. You just really brush over the top. Right, now, there's so many different shades on here, um, but what I'm going to do is get the basic um, parts in, so where it comes from, like how we did on the stencil, so it would be the very dark, um, and then into, into the medium and into the light, I've got, we've got two sections on here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark in, in that second part, is just with light. Now I don't want to be going into where I'm putting a dark or a black and that's just because if you shade first in where you put in the black it'll always um, not be as dark when you actually put the black in. It can heal a lot lighter you know, when, when it comes to tattooing real people. What is I'm doing, I'm just putting a, a quick rough marking in as to where some of the shades are. Mainly some of the important parts. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm mainly looking for them second areas, so where I've got the black and then it goes into the grey, I'm just mainly hitting them ones. And then also where where we've got parts that are just shaded, so there's not necessarily as much black. Um, we, we are just shading and, and how it is on the stencil. So on here, for example, where it's got a lighter part in the middle, I can, I can hint a bit of that with just the light, just to mark it in. And like with this one here, it has a really darker, out, out of, um, more to the outside, it's darker. 
So with the light, I'm just doing the inside and more leaving the outside to put a darker shade, but it's just so we can map it in. Now you can see already, we've got a nice permanent stencil um, to go off there. So what I'll be going at next is the black areas. Um, you know, I can give it a nice bit of a clean. There is some areas still where I don't want to be too harsh with the wiping, where we haven't marked some areas in, um, especially around the middle there, where it's just a lot of compact shades. Um, but I can now start giving it a bit more of a wipe, and it's it's more like a permanent stencil. Right, so now we're going to use the 17 mag. change that needle there. The needles are wobbling about a little bit in the cartridge so I'm not quite happy with that. That's something you can keep an eye on as well. I mean if the needles are wobbling about a bit or if you notice anything wrong, you know, just, just swap it and change it. You should check your needles all the time just to make sure they're bang on and, and there's no, nothing wrong with them. Okay, so 17 mag, and I'll mainly be using this just for the black, just for the the world famous black. Now with the black you want to have really, some really slow hand movements where it's solid black and then if it's a part that's going to be into a shade, so if it goes from black into a shade, you know, you just want to brush it out. So like what we did with the light, I'm just putting in the areas and fading it out. This is almost like the next step to the permanent stencil. So if I can get the black areas in, I mean, I know on here where it's, it's quite a deep black and then I want it to just fade into a dark grey before it hits the leaf. So if I just put it in there and just flick it and fade it out and have it more deep black under there, so it'd be the same again here more deep black towards the petal and then just fade it out I think if you can get into a rhythm and have a way you go about every tattoo the same um, it really helps then you know exactly what you're going to do for every one you know, rather, a lot of people do, they can just build it up from the bottom to the top, which is fine, it's just preference. But I find if you can have it the same every time, it, you know, all your tattoos look the same, and you can go about them the same way, it's a lot easier. Now there will be bits from these black that we're going to come back to. And that will be the part where we really start using a few different shades and making it more complete. But what I'm trying to do now is just knock in the black areas. Um, and, and also, with this being a separate needle, I'm not, um, I'm not having to clean it and, and swap between all the shades. It literally just is the black, so it's not getting diluted. It is just straight black. 
it's going in and especially when you're tattooing real people it will just stay just black you're not watering it down or anything like that so like here we've already got the light shade so I'm almost just flicking it into that light shade And don't worry about getting completely up to every single edge at this stage. Um, that's what the, the round shader and the line is for. You don't want to be wasting all your time trying to get right into the edges. I mean, get it as clean as you can, but don't be so overly picky at this stage. And the parts where it is um, solid black but it's a bit too small, I'll come back to that with the round shader as well. Now what, what we're aiming for all the time is to have, especially when you're colouring in, is to have them all completely flat. Now that if there is any areas that are quite awkward, you can just turn it on its side and just however is best and flick it out. But you really want to try and have it flat wherever you can. And that just gives it an even shade. You know, the needles will all go in at the same depth. Now I find like, I use um, magnums but you can have curved needles and they basically have a curve round instead of just being flat but I do prefer the magnums just it, it takes a little bit more of getting used to but I think it really helps in the long run for having your shades all nicely all the same rather than it blending out everywhere Okay, let's give it a wipe and see what's going on. Oh, that is so much nicer to look at now. Right, perfect. So now that we have the blacks in on the areas that I want, um, well, for now, I might come back into a little bit here and there, but that is spot on how it is. So I've just faded it out uh, as much as I can in the areas. So when it comes to adding um, the shades 
in over the top it'll blend in nicely um, I don't want any harsh areas you know because it makes it very hard to then blend it into shades I, I quite like especially with realism for it to just blend out everywhere you know rather than you know some harsh shades or it coming to a sudden stop okay so we'll move on to the next part which is um, adding some shades and then what I'm going to do is come in with the round shader and just get in and tighten areas up um, next okay now that we have um, the light shades and the black in um, we're on to the fun part we can finally get some detail and some nice shades going on start bringing the design together so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the 15 mag and we're going to go in with some dark here so I'm dipping in the dark and then I can really start building up the shades and blending the black out to how I want to now. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just coming from the black and then just flicking it out I find it easier for me I just go one way and just brush over the top just like that and then you can even come across the other way and that will just smoothen it out So what I'm doing now is, same with the bottom part, I'm blending the black out but I'm also just keeping up to um, where I have the stencil and just blending that black out. I'm also trying to shade the same way as the petals goes as well. and that will just give it that rounded, almost 3D look to it. And because we've got the shades mapped in already, you can, you can generally see it coming together, so the more that you build upon it, the better it, it looks and, and it's easier to read when you're, when you're shading it. Now with the real skin as well, it seems to go in so fast, but when you're tattooing um, people, it, it goes in a lot slower and it almost blends it for you a little bit as well. So don't worry about it being a little bit harsh on the real skin. You know, you will see every single texture that you, that you put in. And because it doesn't go red, you'll, you'll see every tiny little bit. 
Now I'm just dipping between the medium and the light here, um, just to blend it in from the black. Now you'll see as the more shades we get in, the more the lines that we've put in will disappear. Now we still want some um, parts to stay and that will just make it hold in time. But especially where the dark deeper black lines are, they're the ones that will disappear into the design. And the good thing about these shades as well, now that I'm tattooing, because they're all mixed from the black, even the light, it, it just gives a, a really light texture of dots. So going over it now with the medium won't overwork the skin too much or anything like that. So I can be going over not having to worry. Same again, I'm just cross hatching over, just turning different ways and getting it nice and smooth. Well, as smooth as I can on the real skin. Now, depending on which parts I'm doing, like here, there's very much a, a really fast flick out from dark to, to grey, so I am literally just doing the same movement that I'm thinking in my head for each part. You know, there might be a part where it really curves over, so I might wanna just follow the lines or just a really fast blend out. You know, just trust the way you shade. And then just keep, keep building it up. There is parts like here where it's it, you, that leaf, the petal on top of that petal and it's got a little bit of a shadow and now I might just want to exaggerate that um, just to get it a little bit more because there's not much of it on on the design but for me I just want to if I can if there's any parts where I can just make it that little bit more um, I think it massively helps especially on there uh, on real skin. I find as well if you if you're going from the extra dark and then you you wanting to do a part that's light you can dip it in the extra light and then wipe it on your tissue and then go to the extra light again and, and that's what I kind of do between them all I'll, I'll, I'll almost think what, what am I using and dip between the extra light just to water it down between the shades you know I'm not so like some people they'll use a rinse cup um, to water between the shades but I just find for me in the past that it always ends up diluting all the shades um, so I, now I do tend to just kind of work in the design the same way kind of how I've done um, for everything and then I know exactly what's, what I've put in and I know how it's going to heal
So what I'm doing, I'm just keep cross hatching and just slowly building up them them shades. And just keep working up and building it and building it up until you're happy. Keep dabbing away there. And you notice a lot as well that I keep coming back to areas and I think that's just when I'm when I've got the right um, shade so I might be using um, a medium and and if I see any bits that I can go over and just smoothen out and use the medium for I'll just do that while I'm going so you don't necessarily have to finish one bit at a time you can you can keep going and doing the bits for that shade I find with this like brush technique as well, it does help that you can come back to areas and just keep building it up rather than just move on and finish one bit at a time. That does obviously depend on what I'm doing. Um, And then as we move on to the lighter shades, I can now start bringing it right across and blending it right out. And by going back over into these darker parts, it really smooth, it smoothens it a lot, but then it also, it blends it right out into the light. And that way, anywhere that has got a lip, so you see how the petal will curve over here so I'm not necessarily shared as much in the middle just to really exaggerate that curve over Now as we get towards the middle of the rows, I'm just going to get all the bits that I can with the mag and then because it's that small that's where I'll probably come into using the round shader. I just really, really lightly on these light areas, just brushing ever so soft. 
just barely scratching the top and then that way I come back and cross hatch the other way Another good tip which I didn't mention previously is that if you're struggling to know where to put the blacks um, you can, if you on your printout of your picture if you lighten it up really like to the absolute extreme it'll, it'll really enhance where the blacks are on the picture as well. You see now the, the, the shape of where the petal goes, I'm just literally following that shape. Now there's a part here on the leaf where you've got a bit of a shadow underneath and what I'm doing there is I'm, I'll start off quite slow and more shorter hand movements and then as I get one it lighter I'll have it less and less and less until it, bear, until it doesn't even touch. So I'll be really slow and then less and less and less and just flick it out.
Okay, so now we're going to use the round shader, finally. <clears throat> And we're going to start with the blacks and then anywhere where we want to tighten up or really get into the edges now's the time and we can get all these little tiny bits where we couldn't quite get in there with the man now you don't want to be so harsh with this like the liner you, you've got to almost think of it as a shader and little small circles just you know brush it in you almost want to wear where the bits are where you're getting into the edges and you you're flicking it into the parts where is black you don't want to get go into the parts that you've already colored black that you're happy with you know because that way you would overwork the skin so you just want to almost flick it into parts. And then like what we're doing before, now we're in the middle. We're, we're doing the black just how we did with the, with the mag. So we're just flicking it out. Um, that way we can pull some shades out from it very easily. And this part of the design is very important with the round shader. You know, it gives them extra little details that, that you can't normally get with any other needle. And then the idea is that we come back in with the liner and just sharpen it up exactly what we've done with the mag. So now I'm looking at parts of the design that I can that I can do with the round shader. So if there's any parts that I can now get into the bits that I couldn't do with the mag, now's the time. And then just any little corners. And you'll notice now where I've put the black and as it comes to the leaf I've kept it lighter and that's just so the leaves stand out um, above the shading you know I don't want parts to then start merging into each other and that's just a little twist that I've put in on the design um, but you can do the background however you like but I've found like I said before any parts where I can just exaggerate the, the effect I will, um, any shades or any parts just to bring things out, I really try and do that in my designs. And then also any parts where I can make it a bit more contrast I will. Because on, on actual, on tattoo designs when you do them on people, you want them to be as contrast and stand out as possible especially on the darker skin
and then you see now it's really starting to take shape. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to clean the needle off just on the tissue that I've been using and then I'm going to dip it in the extra light just to clean it and start blending it into the shades that I'm going to be using. So we're going to dip between the medium and the dark and then off these blacks in the centre that's where I'm going to start putting the shades in with the round shader and just exactly the same technique as with the mag just really brush it in and the more you practice that brushing technique the better you'll become um, with doing it and more smoother effects and I find as well now I tend to go with that exact shade that I'm using so if I want it to be dark I'll brush it with the dark and, and get them dots until it is just dark from the dots you know and it heals perfectly how it is um, I mean some parts you do want to build it up and have it so smooth but then also again if you can the better you become you will just get that that dark straight away nice clean and it, it won't go red at all in the skin and it heals so much better and again with the round shader um, I do have that hanging out really far and that's just to see exactly where my needle is but if I want it to be a softer shade on some really delicate parts I will just hang it right really far in so it's almost how the mag would be and um, and that way it just it just goes in a lot softer so like the parts that I'm doing now but still exactly the same technique I'll still be brushing it in just skimming on the surface Now the round shaders, they do take a bit of practice to get used to but I find they're the most valuable tool um, to making you work a lot detailed with the shades and um, just so it's not all done with the mag I see so many people just using the mag and that's fine but um, I do like it for a lot more details So what I'm doing here is I'm just turning round and just cross hatching and then just getting it right into the edges. That way when I come in with the liner it'll just be really really sharpening it up. The good thing about this way of doing um, the process is I think you can't go too far wrong. If you're doing this for every single tattoo, um, it will be easy to follow, easy to remember. And the steps that you take, you can't go too far wrong. And if you apply that to every single design, um, you won't get stuck or lost. I mean it's very overwhelming if you start quite a complicated piece or a big tattoo but by doing these steps you know you can apply this to any single design now obviously with this being a rose there's only a certain amount of textures and and things like that but I will be following it up in maybe a future course with some 
different techniques, maybe fur or, you know, how to do different things. But I, I thought with this design, you can have a go, you can make it your own and you can put your own twist on, you know, the design. So what I'm doing now, what I talked about before was putting the lines and, and textures in to follow the shape and, and direction of the petals and they do have just some quite lines in it and, and that's just what I'm doing with the round shader now is I'm just following it over with some subtle lines. Now this makes a massive difference from it just being smooth to then actually having some textures of the petals just to give it some direction. You'll also notice as you go you'll be doing one thing and then you'll see a shade that you can do with that um, needle or that shade and that's exactly what I do as I go. I just continually you know, build up each section that I see. And I do find as well with the round shader it can be quite like a pencil um, or a biro pen. Now I do a lot of drawings with biro pen so to me going over some of these shades I can hit it a lot smoother than I could with a mag. Um, so that's kind of what, what I would do on some areas I'd literally just go right across the top with, with a round shader. Now it's these tiny little details and getting things up into the corners that really make a difference here.
Right, so we're going to go back to the 15 mag. And now that we've done a lot with the round shader and got it nice and, and tight and up to the edges, got some little textures going in, um, I'm just going to start anywhere where I see where it's, it needs a little bit more shades, a few parts still to finish and blend out, um, and then we're going to move on to the leaves. Now with the parts where I'm, I'm trying to get it right up to the edge and it, and it will go slightly darker than, than what's on the picture but I guess I'm so used to tattooing um, normal skin that, that moving on to the real skin I always think about it lightening up. Now when you're tattooing on an actual person it will settle into the skin and it will fade in. So any parts where I've got subtle hints of lines um, they will just become grey lines in, in uh, skin when it's healed but on the real skin um, I guess obviously it's not going to settle in so it will be just how it is So as you can see here where I'm, I'm shading on the background um, and there's two leaves that are very close to each other and now this one has a really black part on this side and then there's the background with the shadow and now what I'm, what I'm trying to do is just have dark wet next to light and, and keep it so everything's quite contrast because I could easily just darken it and then everything would start merging together so what, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the shadow and then just fading it across so it leaves a subtle bit of light um, as it comes towards that other leaf.
Okay, now let's do some leaves. So we're going to start with the 15 mag and then we'll be moving on to um, some parts with the round shader just to get some extra details. So first off, what I'm thinking is just do the, the basic shades, how they are, and then obviously where the lines are, that'll be where we add some uh, textures in. But we're, we're not going to get so carried away on the leaves because the main focus is the rows, and I want them to be, you know, some parts of the leaves quite detailed, but a lot of them to be quite set back. Now I'm mainly here shading with just the darks um, for the leaves. And I want the leaves to be, you know, really dark and and um, make the rose stand out even more. Now normally if I'm wanting textures um, underneath the shades, I'll put them in first. So for example, if it's um, like a tiger and you're wanting to do the fur and then you, you would do the black and the textures then shade over the top. But with the leaves, because I want them quite background, um, I'm doing it almost the opposite way. So I'm, that's, that's why I'm doing the shades first and that way the textures will blend more into the shades then. And also with, with the leaves, as long as you have the same texture, you know, the, the look in the same, um, you can just kind of make up the, the way you do them. So you don't have to follow the reference completely for the leaves, as long as you have the same texture going on and the shades in the right places. Same again with the leaves. You want to you want to kind of shade and follow the direction of where the textures are in the leaves. Now you don't have to be so um, cautious on getting them quite smooth or anything like that. You almost want them to have a bit of texture and to be a bit different. So don't worry about them being patchy and stuff like that. When we come in with the round shader, that'll be when we can start really making the details count and making it how we want. And then just in where we have the the floor lines coming through, I'm just putting a really light subtle shade there.
Now what, what I think um, when I'm shading these is to just move my hand how I think the shades would be in the middle. Not Don't worry overly much about um, about copying it, it, ex every exact detail because you just want to give a hint of that detail, you know. I mean these are the background as well so you don't want to be overly cautious and I suppose just let loose and put, put your style in there from the picture that I took the the petals from um, the leaves sorry I mean they're all different leaves so I want to create that texture throughout and make it my own so kind of just making them all the same
Okay, right. Now we'll get onto the brown shader. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go in in between the medium and the dark um, shades and just kind of put in some little textures. Now this is more just to bring some bits out, get up to the edges, just kind of a bit of everything really. Now you can even put in some little dotty bits, um, just kind of have a play around with how you want the texture to look and then kind of replicate that on all of the leaves so that you know they're all quite similar. Now, I, I don't want to get too carried away with this because I've designed this in a way that I want them to be very background. There's only a couple of the leaves that I want to have some uh, detail in and that's mainly towards the end of the leaves so as it comes in it gets darker um, and that way it makes the rose stand out a little bit more. And just try not to get too carried away as well. I mean you can always do a bit on this this first petal and then you can move on and that way you know give it a wipe see how it is see how it's looking and then come back to part Perfect. So they're coming along really nice. So what I tend to do is is just go back and forward between them two needles um, just until I'm happy, you know, getting it getting the shades deeper and darker and um, just building up them textures and just getting it so you get to the point where you're happy. So while I do these leaves I'm gonna just go in and now, now is about the point where I just go in and any little bits that I can see all over just darken, saturate a little bit more and I suppose just get carried away.
See, each time that you go over, like these bottom two, you can tell such a big difference when you just hit, you know, wipe it over and just go over again. And, and, and that's what you need to be doing is just making sure everything's right and it's saturated and just building it up nice and gently. Okay, now that we're near, nearly done, um, I'm going to go in with the liner and just sharpen up a little bit um, and just really get any little tiny details that I can see. Um, this is where you can get really carried away and and get it nice and sharp. So just like what you did with the round shader, you want to be just going into any little tiny areas you can and just really getting it nice and neat. And same as with the round shader, where you go into the black, you can just flick it in. That way you're not going to be overworking the black areas that you did previously. And you can even go in, what I'm doing now is, is just going in on, on the leaves and um, the lines that we first put in, I'm getting them and just going up to the edges and just getting that added little bit of detail. This is the fun part.
Okay, now that the final lines and details are in, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check over, make sure I'm completely happy, and just finish any tiny little shades or any little bits that I can see um, before I'd say it's complete. So there's just a few shades that I can just see here and there. And it's not until you step back and just really look over it for a while and you'll not, oh, notice like little tiny bits that you just want to go into and just just make perfect. And we are complete. And there we have it, that is the rose complete. We are done and dusted. Um, please let me know how you get along and if you've enjoyed the course. Um, I will be doing some more advanced techniques at some point so keep an eye out for that. And yeah, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it.